Sanjitra and you have already met Dimple. I hope I'm audible to everyone. Okay. Uh, so we are technical authors at Canonical and we'll be talking about the Canonical Open Documentation Academy. Uh, we'll leave some time at the end for questions, but feel free to ask away if you have anything in the middle as well. So this is the story of how the Canonical Open Documentation Academy, or as we fondly call it, CODA, was born. Uh, so like it says in the introduction post, many of us wouldn't be here if it was not for open source or Linux, right? So that kind of availability and accessibility is what enabled us to get involved in solving some problems of our own and trying to make the world a little bit better for everyone, right? So open and inclusive collaboration, we've all agreed that that is the best way to develop software and that's why we are here. And I'm through this initiative, we are proposing that we could do the same with building documentation as well. Uh, so the difficult part is actually getting involved. Like uh, today morning I was talking to a, a lot of you and the most common questions seem to be about where do I start? Okay, I am a student, where do I start? I am new to this, where do I start? Who do I talk to? How do we get involved? So that is the exact problem that we are trying to solve uh, through one particular aspect of uh, software development and documenting it. Uh, so we wanted to fix this lack of an established process for getting involved. And since we are technical authors and we mostly deal with documentation, uh, we propose to do it through correcting and building good documentation. So if you see documentation is kind of like the circulatory system for any project. So new features don't exist for the users unless you document it. And new users don't start using a product unless they are aware of it or unless they are aware of the new features, what, what has been released, what is there for me. And established users don't stay until they know what they are staying for. So with this in mind, uh, so I'll do a little bit of a shameless plug, self plug here. So there is a, a lightning talk about the importance of do documentation tomorrow if you're hanging around to listen to the lightning talks. Uh, uh, so for now, you'll have to take my word for it that it is pretty important in the uh, uh, product development life cycle. So one of the technical authors at Canoni Canonical, uh, Graham Morrison, he came up with this idea of creating an academy uh, for anybody and everyone to join and contribute through documentation, contribute to open source through documentation. Uh, so we all thought it was a brilliant idea and that's how Coda was born and we'll be talking more about it. So we had an idea of getting more people involved in contributing to documentation and hence contributing to the product. But how do we do that? Uh, different projects had their own uh, documentation development lifecycle, publishing uh, process, the tools uh, used were slightly different. So how do we get people, especially new contributors, uh, through that is not like very off-putting. Uh, we, we need to have a process that's not very off-putting or very difficult to start with, right? So docs as code approach is kind of uh, the most commonly accepted approach in open source. So we stuck to it. We created a GitHub repository that has a curated list of issues. So the Coda repository has curated issues from multiple open source projects. So if you just go to the issues of this repository, you could see issues from uh, Multipass, you could uh, see issues from uh, Ubuntu, desktop, public cloud, everything. So these are created by the technical authors at Canonical. And uh, whenever somebody is interested in working on a particular issue, it can range from a very small update to documentation to a big uh, update uh, to a big update or creating a new topic that doesn't exist as well so whenever somebody is interested you all you need to do is go to that particular issue comment on it saying that okay i'm interested in working on this and uh, the author who created it or somebody else will uh, assign it to you and we are available on standby to provide guidance to walk you through the process to uh, let you experiment learn and still uh, be available for uh, removing any roadblocks that you may face. 
So we have had multiple success stories with these, our experiences, which Dimple will share later. Uh, so how a continuation of how do we do this? One other important aspect of this academy is the public documentation office hours that we host. Currently, it is hosted every Friday. Uh, so for Indian time zone, it's, it's a little bit um, outside of your regular working hours, but it's definitely worth it. So it's uh, currently at, I think, uh, 8.30 every Friday in the evening. Uh, so during these office hours, uh, we don't, uh, along with discussing different aspects of documentation, we also have a tentative schedule, which you can look at and see if the topics are interesting to you, if it is something that you have been trying to learn about. Uh, so you get to meet a lot of people from varied backgrounds, they hear about their experiences. So we have people from the community, from canonical, from outside canonical, other technical writers as well. Uh, so these office hours are also recorded and uploaded to the YouTube channel Ubuntu on Air. So do go check it out. Uh, I have linked the meeting links and other resources here if you want to check, check them out. Okay, so why are we doing this? It's a combination of multiple factors, we are trying to set a new standard for collaboration. So in the spirit of Ubuntu that has kind of evoked so much uh, co uh, community feeling, collaboration, we want to show the true power, we want to show the world what a group of individuals who are interested in similar things can build and what they can achieve. And this also aligns with our promise to engage with the community. and thereby reducing the entry barrier. So this is kind of the biggest problem that we hear when people are trying to get involved in open source. It, it's a true story for myself as well to get into uh, open source. So uh, for people who are uh, feeling a little bit lost about how do I get started with open source, this sounds exciting, everybody is doing it, where do I start? This could be a good first step. Okay, so what does this mean for you? I've been explaining what we are doing so far uh, so, and you've been very patient with me. So you, you might be thinking, okay, what is there in it for me? Uh, so these are the promises that we make uh, for you as a contributor. So this is a new model of collaboration. Uh, open source contributors are very critical to uh, projects as much as critical bug fixes because they are the next generation of critical bug fixes. You might be new today, but you might be the one who fixes like a very uh, dangerous uh, security vulnerability tomorrow, but you need to get started for that. So, and as I told you, documentation greatly impacts uh, a product's impact on, I mean, uh, product's perception uh, with respect to users. So you can actually see the impact that you're making through documentation immediately. Uh, so with all your contributions being on public repositories, you get recognized experience as well. So imagine it, it would be a good thing to put it put on your portfolio or CV saying that, okay, I made this product experience better by doing this. And you, you get to meet a variety of people who do similar stuff, uh, varied backgrounds, like you, ha you can have fun debates about uh, whether to use the Oxford comma or not. So you can have such uh, interesting debates about documentation, about product, about whatever you want, basically. And what does this mean for the community? So for the community, we, the more collaborators, the more contributors, we get more meaningful contributions. So uh, this can even form the first contributions for some projects, which needs that leg up. So there is a sole developer who has a great product somewhere. Uh, he hasn't had the time or the bandwidth to kind of create the documentation for that. So the more this academy evolves, the more first-time contributions become possible. And continuous improvement. Of course, like we aim to fix small issues every day so that we reach to a great standard of documentation eventually. And yeah, so I have linked more resources here. So. Uh, I hope the slides will be shared or you can uh, reach out to me or uh, there's an email address at the end, you can email that uh, as well. So the additional resources is a discourse post which has everything that you need to get started. It has a link to the GitHub repository, it has the link to the recordings that has gone so far for the office documentation hours and it has uh, other uh, posts that were done by canonical technical authors which details about this initiative. 
so uh, since this is a greatly a student audience i would strongly encourage you to join us during one of the office hours uh, probably next friday just check it out uh, what it is about what we talk about so it would be fun to have you all there and now dimple will share more details on our journey and experiences so far okay so the story so far uh we started in jan that's this year and uh, currently we have over 130 issues in our uh, repo and they are from 15 different pro uh, projects and about 40 of them are open so the way issues are consumed are quite interesting so uh, their consumption rate some of them the moment you put it put it in and like within an hour or so people take up the issue some of them they are, they even get closed within a day so it's it's assigned to a person and within a day the issue is solved a pr is submitted to the correct correct project and that gets closed so we actually finish issues quickly and some are even closed before they are assigned how can that even happen well sometimes people just directly go to the actual project repo and submit a pr and it, it works and it's it's merged and then someone else in our uh, open docs academy repo comes in and he says oh i want to work on this and i i have to say i'm sorry it's sorry someone already did that there and since they didn't even tell us about it here we couldn't assign it so in some sense sometimes it's so fast that we don't even assign and the issues get closed but sometimes issues remain open for months together they are waiting for people to take it up or for people who have taken it up and then have done a little bit of work on it and not followed through or not done work and then we do sometimes try and follow up follow up but yeah so sometimes issues tend to stick around for months so we have got everything there what are the types of issues so like like kitna just mentioned it could be something very small oh i just want to change the formatting of this table so it could be something as small as that to something quite big uh where you actually need to code and change how we are presenting documentation for instance uh we wanted to show the list of contributors for every given project so that's like actually adding a little bit of a component in in the ui and get the data from somewhere get the data from github add it and show it well so that's like actual a little actually a little bit of coding involved there so so the type of issues actually range uh quite a bit uh, there are also issues where you just have to try out stuff so there is this new product and maybe not new but any product which has a tutorial given somewhere in the documentation you just have to run through the tutorial and figure out and do everything and then give feedback in terms of how did it work was there any problem didn't i didn't understand this or this needs this and so on so it could just be trials like that or it could actually be new content design where oh we just have this much of information but we actually need to say all of this new stuff and for that how do we put it in in this in this piece in this content or how do you, or you could actually be generating new or uh, totally new pages of how to guide and stuff like that or take content from somewhere and convert it into a format that makes more sense so uh, so the types of issues are very varied you can play around with it quite a bit uh and yeah this is the one that new functionality with coding that i already mentioned now some interesting experiences so there was a uh, yeah the the first one is about um one issue got multiple assignees so someone took it up and then someone else saw that oh there's no work happening for a month and i want to do it so then they, the other person said can i do it and then we were like okay maybe we can split the work and then they actually worked together like that so multiple assignees to a single issue has been done or multiple tas tas are technical authors for a single issue so someone comes with oh uh, i'm trying this out but um, while i'm doing this on my mac os this does not seem to work and then suddenly that problem is no longer related to documentation or even to that specific issue it's something totally different and then you have to get another ta from uh, from a different team which deals with that issue on mac os and then we'll see oh, okay 
so so it's like multiple people help you out if you are stuck in some random different thing there are still people around to help you out in uh, those different circumstances uh and we have seen that some some of the teams um well especially if they don't have a technical author they are kind of skeptical initially about joining this academy about putting in issues there because they are not sure uh, how the contributions will be and how much of work they will have to do but we have actually seen teams which uh, which started off with this skepticism but later on went on to advocate it they actually had this nice good experience of getting community contribution and it being of good quality and being the first community contribution and they were actually um, advocating it to the rest of the company so that was a good thing uh, and to be fair it is actually a lot of work for us the people who we as tas or whoever puts up the issue we try and help uh, so initially there were some comments about oh it's just getting free labor from the outside world to get your stuff done but that's not really true because there's a lot of work that we need we need to do to help you through the whole process so uh, sometimes even just setting up issues we don't just tell you oh this is this is the report this is the issue fix it sometimes we actually uh, go ahead and create a simpler version of the document set so that you don't have to go around searching for a lot of stuff we make a simpler version and you work on this or we any time we give um, feedback on the pull request any change that we suggest we give reasons for that we explain why this change makes more sense and in general why is this better than that and so so it's like we are teaching as we are uh, we are correcting those peers we are actually teaching so it is a lot of uh, work and it's not just like free labor like some people mentioned um and yeah and sometimes some of those problems may be solved in different ways so you could be using different tool sets maybe or different looks and feels or whatever so there are many approaches to solve a given problem and we sometimes have to think about that beforehand try out a few things so that we are able to guide so it's actually pretty much like a teaching job in fact so it it is a lot of work for us that's that's some of uh, stuff and finally what we perceive and what our dreams are in terms of this so what we have noticed is uh it's genuinely helpful welcoming and educational so unlike some of the open source projects out there where usually some persons uh baby and they have come up with the idea and they're very protective about it and so even though the code is open source they might not be very uh accepting welcoming about uh having contributions they say contributions are welcome but that might not mean that really so the actual decisions happen behind closed doors all the design all the decisions and the the prs and the issues in the repo they are there but not really uh, useful and people are not they are like oh don't 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 waste time on these small little things It, this is my baby and that's the sort of uh, quite a few of the open source projects tend to be like that and even if it's a really big one sometimes it's quite difficult to get in but what we have seen here is that is not it at all i mean we have all of these projects and we really are we want you all to come in and we are putting in the effort because we want to create that community and we want this is how we think open source should uh, actually work so and we well ubuntu and freebsd we they at least have this code of conduct and it explains why you are doing certain things and how you do it so there itself there is that initial build up of um, of something doing something well and nicely so uh, so this is not the startup kind of a thing it is more of a, a real uh, open source thing uh, how you would want it to be so we got quite glad about that and we see that people find it useful they keep coming back to our uh, officers and they, they are happy so that's 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 really something nice for us and our dream is like similar things should happen in other open source community so maybe something similar or similar academy could be done in red hat and suze and so on and we could have the super academy where so right now most of our projects most of our issues come from projects from canonical because we are the tas there and we know what it is but we have been reaching out to red hat and all the others so that they can also put in issues 
but the thing is that submitting to different different companies or different ways they might have different ways of contribution so it might not work out as a single academy where the others also come in so you might need these separate academies but but if the whole same principles apply and we create a nice super academy that will be quite cool and uh, that's about it we hope that you all join and in fact uh, we would like someone was mentioning we should uh, we would also like to let you know that uh, we are hiring so please feel free to look up our career pages join us come apply initially come to our academy learn stuff and then come and join us at our company at canonical have fun thank you and this is our email id sorry please take a note we'll answer you